in your long view, what have been the, the high points in the field of service learning? The beginning in the 80s of people who really were thinking about service learning beginning to document what, what was being done. And there began a kind of a, a community of people who were, were writing, and I began writing. And of course, I was encouraged because I was a, uh, had a special appointment at the University of Minnesota. So the idea of thinking about what we were doing um, and then uh, we began, um, well, Minnesota was the first state that had a, uh, a, a convened, we convened, I convened a, a group of uh, mayors and legislators and Supreme Court people to talk about the idea of, of creating at that, what would be now something like a, an AmeriCorps program for the, for the state. Um, and so we had a state commission uh, in 1985. Uh, we developed some legislation that basically then became the first youth development and service learning legislation in the country that was that would fund uh, community education throughout the state to do service learning and it's still in place. It's between four and five million dollars a year that goes to schools to do service learning. And uh, that got the attention of, of our, our governor, Governor Purpich. Uh, and he, he, he supported it, and uh, I remember traveling with him to the National Governors Association meetings and talking with other um, uh, people from other states um, and found that there were people in, in Massachusetts, in Vermont, in California, uh, people like Kathy Kay and, and her colleagues, um, uh, who were also working kind of in an isolated way on some of these issues at the state level. And so I said, well, why don't we get together and we'll call it a national conference? So we did. So we had about two months lead time and we had about 200 people and we got together at the University of Minnesota. Governor Purpich kind of uh, said some good things to get us started. And then we began convening on a, on a regular basis. And so NYLC uh, was the initial host for the first two years. And then I, I decided that you know, we needed to move it around the country. And so I remember working very uh, closely with, with Kate McPherson in, uh, in, in the state of Washington and Carol Kinsley in the state of Massachusetts. And so we, we moved uh, Harry Silcox in Pennsylvania, um, uh, those uh, with McClellan Hall, with the National Indian Youth Leadership Project. We, we, we ran the, the conference down in Albuquerque. So the idea of a uh, of a convening of people uh, to talk about this, then it led to kind of a critical mass as far as what was happening uh, around national service legislation, because at that time, what year was uh, Jim uh, the first convening? What year was it? And and w is that the marker of the first NYLC conference then? Nineteen eighty nine was the first okay. was the first conference and the first. Uh, Legislative breakthrough was 1990, which with George H. W. Bush mm -hmm. signing the the uh, the uh, the law that led to the, the first National Service Commission, and then and then Clinton picked up on it in '94. But the role that uh, this community of service learning people played um, uh, was to 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 bring e emphasis to the idea that national service wasn't just full-time um, and for young adults, but it was the idea that, that citizenship and civic engagement and national service needed an on-ramp. And so we, we made the case for service learning as a part of national service. At the same time, many of us were coming out of experiential education, uh, progressive education movement, constructivism, uh, and teaching and learning. And so we brought together the national service emphasis and the progressive education people. And together we, we formed a, 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 co a, not, a strong enough coalition that there, uh, there was a major breakthrough, of course, when uh, service learning became part of the national service uh, legislation. And, and that, was, that was the really takeoff point because then uh, there was funding at every, at, within every state. There was a state official who, who receives funding through Learn and Serve. It's not a lot of money. Uh, and the beginning of uh, more activity. Also very important at that time 
was the activity of, of national funders who, who really came to the fore around these ideas. And I think largely picking up on the experiences that they would able, were able to share as being a part of the, uh, the National Service Learning Conferences. So the Kellogg Foundation initially was, was the first major national funder for service learning. And then later on, uh, the, uh, of course, in recent years, the State Farm uh, folks, uh, the Shin Yuan Foundation on the international level, the Mott Foundation uh, helped out early on, um, and a lot of local foundations that, that supported people who were coming to national conferences, national trainings, and so on and so forth. So I don't know if that, that gives you a little bit of a sense of how it was and it's it's a little it's a little bit like this this conference, um, and I'm going to talk about this in a couple of days. But you know, we created a a community of people, or we came together as a community of people around some shared ideals, and collectively, even though there weren't a lot of us, we were able to push the legislative initiative, and then push practice, push standards, push the quality of teaching and learning, um, publications. I wrote the first um, of three uh, uh, lead articles in special editions of the Phi Delta Kappa, which is you know a top education journal, in 1990, and, and then I basically had one every decade. You know, where so the idea of, of building service learning uh, into the uh, not only a policy sphere, but also building it from from an academic sense and creating, I think, a, a strong case for it uh, and giving it an intellectual foundation, I think was really important. Not just me, of course. I mean, lots of other joined it, but I think the combination of practice and, and active scholarship underneath service learning has been very important. I think the, the combination of the two. And then the convening to celebrate practice, celebrate scholarship, celebrate research breakthroughs, that's what the conference does. So you got this critical mass then that comes together, representing everything you need. I think in 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 a uh, something that's kind of movement like, is that you've got people on the ground who are really driving it. You got the people thinking about it. You got the people evaluating, assessing it. Put them together, and that's what this conference is. You know, so and so you got a community. Well, it's it's so unique. Um, that you would have the researchers, the, the people who practice it, the, fa the teachers and administrators and the students, the youth leaders here right. that are really, you know, engaged. Yeah, a third of the people, um, third of the people here are under the age of 18. It's astonishing. And, and they're not here sitting on their hands or goofing off somewhere. You know, they're, they're presenters. They're, they're part of the action. And they're here purposefully to talk about what they've been doing in a purposeful way back home and inspire us further. 